Well, this article in the New York Times basically states, and we're going to post the link. Basically, the article states that uh, it, they interview a lot of producers in Hollywood that make two assertions. And it's, first of all, it's shocking. And most of them don't go on the record. So it's like these quietly, they're, they're actually expressing these views. Two things. One, the Me Too movement went too far. And there was an overcorrection. And uh, audiences are not responding to a lot of the new projects that are coming out, including there's the Harvey Weinstein movie that's coming out in a couple weeks, actually. Yeah, oh, she said. She said that's coming out. And I think that that movie will tank. I predict that this movie, she said, which is about the beginning of the Me Too movement, that that is going to tank. Wait, let me. Um... Yeah, I'm actually seeing it Saturday. Um, but uh, the, the trailer is insufferable. Well, let's let's talk about all this. A freaking Ikea chair. So this article in the New York Times is after Me Too reckoning of fear, Hollywood is regressing. Um, this, uh, of course, the New York Times is, you know, the media outlet that actually broke Me Too. And there's a movie coming out in a a couple weeks, Alan, you said you're seeing it on Saturday, uh, which we, uh, hopefully you can talk about it next week. It's called She Said. Uh, I'm sorry, seeing it a week from Saturday. A week from Saturday. Okay. We'll talk about it in the coming weeks. But the point is, is that this movie She Said is about the two journalists that uncover the Harvey, we Harvey Weinstein and, you know, the allegations against him. He had a whole team that would, you know, squash any story that would be written about Harvey Weinstein that would be negative. And these journalists that work, these two female journalists from the New York Times actually uh, did their own investigation, did their investigation and uncovered uh, all the, the horrific things that Harvey Weinstein did. And that story led to the Me Too movement. What this story is about now in the New York Times, the timing of this is very unusual to me. And we'll post the link to this story in the description. Um, I'm sure there's workarounds. Uh, you might want to use a browser called Brave uh, to get around some of it. Uh, that can that can, that work works sometimes. Uh, to read this story, uh, I'm not going to read it. Um, I, I I know that I, I I'm what I'm hoping is is some other other people on on YouTube will discover this story. But the basics of it are this: is that the Me Too movement has gone too far. It's gone too far. And the, the crop of films that have come out that have been pure female empowerment or um, gender swaps, they're not resonating with uh, the Americans who just want entertainment. They're not resonating. In fact, they're tanking pretty, pretty on the regular. And there's this, this movie she said about Harvey Weinstein, um, I'd almost rather see a documentary. I don't need to see a dramatized. Mm -hmm. If you've seen the trailer for She Said, how did you describe it, Alan? Insufferable. Yeah, it's really cringe. Like, like just everyone involved, like this is so important. And this is, this is, you know, what they're it, like. And look, Harvey Weinstein deserves what he got, but also Hollywood was complicit. How many times you see when Harvey Weinstein comes up, you see photos of people in Hollywood. Someone will criticize like, hey, there's Oprah Winfrey or they, there's Hillary Clinton. And they're all standing smiles sitting next to Harvey Weinstein. It's it's uh, ridiculous. Yeah, this is the thing. It's so hypocritical because I don't want to see a big studio production of a story that of a guy they protected. Exactly. They protected Harvey Weinstein. Everybody, even and now I, they're making and now they're making a movie about it to say that, oh no, we've known all along. You know, we right. you know, it's just so hypocritical. Even I heard in the 90s that he was a dirtbag. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like at Sundance, people would say, Oh, you got to watch out for that Harvey Weinstein. I'm like, why? Like, uh, you know, he's he's got a reputation. I'm like, all right, well, okay. Uh, I didn't have any direct knowledge of anything that he did or anyone that he had any interaction with. Um, but I do know that this movie, what I feel like Hollywood likes to do with these movies is, see, we did nothing wrong. 
And by putting out this movie, she said, which is about the New York Times journalist that uncovered the Harvey Weinstein story that led to the Me Too movement. I feel like by putting this movie out, everyone affiliated can say, ha, huh, see, ha, huh, you know, uh, uh, w- 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 he's bad. Look We're what we really did. We made, a, we made a movie talking about all the bad things that happened. See what we did? But now the New York Times, as this story, I just think is very interesting timing about this. They interview a lot of producers. I strongly recommend check out this story. They interview a lot of producers, a lot of them not going on the record like uh, uh, by their name, right? but prominent producers, and there's uh, two main takeaways from it. One, the overcorrection of the Me Too movement, right? And the fact that audiences are not responding to movies that that are the result of this overcorrection. The other thing that this story goes into that I thought was really interesting, in addition to that aspect, and look, you just need look around, look at all the movies that have tanked. What was that action movie with Jessica Chastain and a group of female... Oh, uh, it's like 305. Something yeah, like I, first of all, I never saw the movie, but I don't even know one single person who did see the movie. The 305, it, a 305, it just, yeah. I mean, the and trailer. I saw or, it. Wait, you saw it? I saw it. I, they, yeah, it's woke in the sense of it's all females. But what's interesting is, I'll, I'll give it the one good point. Um, their whole motivation was to save the men in their lives. So... <laughs> I don't know. I just saw the trailer and like, I remember thinking I'll never go see that movie. Yeah. It it is certainly set up to be, Hey, this is a female kick-ass movie. You got to see it. Yeah. 321. Okay. What? I'm looking at one of the comments. It said 321, but I I don't think, I don't think Max is that sure either. (laughs) See what's so funny. You can't even remember it. The other thing that the story gets into, which I thought was also really interesting is that, uh, they talked to a producer that basically over the last couple of years, he has not hired one white person at all. He's only hired, uh, you know, people of color, uh, women. And he feels he kind of has some regret because he feels none of these people were really qualified to be in the positions that they're mm-hmm. in. So he, he hired people that weren't really didn't, didn't work up the ladder, so to speak. Right. And it goes into that in this story. And it's just, here's what's interesting. The 355, that's it. Agent uh, 570. Yeah, thank you for that. The the, Yeah, that was what it was. But um, yeah, so these two main points. Now, here's what's shocking about it. One, that people are speaking aloud this, even though it's not, you know, they're not, um, it's on the record, but they they don't want to be identified, which is very telling. And the second part of that is it's in the New York Times. The fact that this is in the New York Times, that should be a signal to the trades. Hey, Variety, Reporter, Deadline, IndieWire, ones that report on industry and trade news. You may want to do a little study and look at what's at the top of the box office, what tanked bros and and films of, of, of that type. They're not performing. And if this is not sustainable. This is not a sustainable business model. For, for a healthy entertainment industry. When you look at, um, I, I've been reading uh, David Poland's excellent newsletter, The Hot Button. Just look up David Poland, The Hot Button. And he reports, he is all a numbers guy. He is literally like the 538, but for entertainment and numbers. And he just dry looks at the numbers, right? And then tries to kind of look at those tea leaves and come to conclusions. And box office is like half of what it was when it was healthy back in like 2018, which uh, the box office was like 10 billion. And this year it'll end up being like half of that. So that's a tremendous, uh, when you look at 50% of your business, your business is down by 50%. That's, you need to pay attention to that. What could be the cause? A dramatic shift in in entertainment. I think Marvel Phase Four has been uh, a disappointment. Now that we're at the end of it, um, Black Panther: Wakanda Forever, which Alan, you're probably seeing it. You've probably already seen it. I've not seen it now. You're no, gonna, Disney, you know, weirdly, Disney doesn't like me as much as Warner Brothers does. You're, you're going to get invited to a screening. What do they call that screening? Oh, the no, no, that, that's Warner Brothers who does that. 
for me. Oh, oh, okay. It's Warner Brothers. Yeah. All so right. most likely I'll actually be seeing Black Panther with you <laughs> wherever that screening is going to be. Okay, cool. Me, you, and Dante will go see yeah. it and then we'll talk about it. Um, you know, I'm sure they're going to invite us at the last minute. Yeah. Like Wednesday before. Yeah. I mean, in the next two weeks, we'll probably get something. Right, right. In any case, um, what I, I don't I don't understand why other trade outlets and film threats not a trade right we don't we don't we we're not so much about industry news you know we really stay focused on talking about the movies having a conversation with you same thing with the website the website is primarily review focused you know we'll do interviews here and there and whatnot but it's pretty much review we focus on reviews of indie movies that's our that's our lane you know we kind of own that lane I like to think that we do. Uh, but we, we're not so much on reporting about news and, and trade news, but this really got my attention. Um, and the fact that it was in the New York Times, which, you know, just weeks from now, there's going to be this movie that's going to be heralding the heroes at the New York Times that uncovered the Harvey Weinstein story. The movie, and I predict that movie is going to bomb. That movie, she said, will tank. Who is going to want to see that? Who is going to want to say, hey, it's date night. We're going to the movies. Let's go see that Me Too movie about the New York Times journalists. And they're, and that and it celebrates their heroism. Uh, I would rather see, now, frankly, I would rather see this as a documentary. If you're going to do it, Absolutely. a deep dive documentary, not from, from someone who can be somewhat in looking at it in a, in a, in a, in a, just from a, a just in a, in a perspective where they're not coming at it, where they want to prove a point right at the beginning. Yeah, I think what you're saying is non-preachy. Non-preachy and, and more investigative. And look at, here. Here's, here's a subject. Why was Harvey Weinstein protected for decades? See, that's the document. I think that's the winning documentary is, is not only what Harvey Weinstein did and, and his tactics, but how Hollywood protected him. That's, that's the documentary I want to see. That, that to me, that's a much more compelling topic because he was feared in Hollywood. And there was a woman, and I forget her name, she was the publicist that she had a strategy. This is how so many of Harvey Weinstein movies always were nominated for Oscars. That's why people wanted to work with Harvey Weinstein, is because, you know, movies that he made, women would win Best Actress. And back in the day, when I was doing Film Threat, we did a column called Tales from the Casting Couch. This is in 1993, okay? 25 years before the Me Too movement in Film Threat, the print magazine, we had a column. It was written by different writers from Film Threat. One was Josh Allen Friedman. Another one was Dean LaManna. And in our column, we would talk to an actress who would tell us stories. Uh, many of them, you know, we had to like kind of talk around it. It was a legal hassle, but the column ran for years and it was completely ignored, completely ignored this column. Um, Rhonda Shear, who uh, was on a show called uh, Up All Night. Do you remember Up All Night? Yep. Remember that show? She admitted in our column that she was raped by a producer. Didn't make any news whatsoever. Um, local Fox News, it was the local Fox News affiliate at the time, ended up doing a story on it. So I was on TV. I wonder if I have the clip. I posted the clip a long time ago and then never, I don't know, just, yeah, I don't, I don't have the clip. But um, there, was a, there, was a, there was a news report and, and they talked about it and they went to SAG and SAG completely dismissed everything. Mm -hmm. And it was in, in the, in this video report, it was myself and Gloria Allred just saying, you know, saying, Hey, this is a thing that happens in Hollywood. I was kind of shocked because I moved to Hollywood in 1989 and was like, you know, Hey, that whole thing of the casting couch, that's like something from the 1940s come to find out like, Oh, that's a thing that happens like on the regular. So that's why we started the column in film threat. I don't think that I am the right person to be telling that story. I never wrote the column, but I felt very strongly about it. But there was an interesting thing that would come up in the column. There were two things. Um, one, uh, there was anger at the producers who participated in this. And the second thing was there was anger from other actors, actors, because there were men in the column as well. 
that we covered, but other actors and actresses who were upset with their colleagues who did this basically pay for play or play for pay, maybe reverse it. Yeah. So the, that thing that I discovered is there were a lot of actors that were upset with like, why do you, if you keep doing this, this is just going to propagate itself. So this is not a new thing. It's something that kind of shocked and surprised me when I first moved to Los Angeles. And, um, uh, you know, and now look, here we are. Uh, but I think that this, I, I think that now what this does is it's going to open the door for maybe taking a little bit of a critical eye to the current state of Hollywood. And so there's kind of two issues. There's the Me Too thing, right? And it's like the overcorrection. Let's just make every villain in every movie a white male. I'm shocked when it's not that. Um, uh, I just think that, that gets boring and limiting. It's boring and limiting. Um, it's good work, though, for white male actors. So good for them. It's always, it's always fun to play the villain. Um, but, uh, but I think that this overcorrection is costing Hollywood. And this article is the first sign that, that this is something that, um, that people are beginning to recognize. Yeah, and I yeah. think that more people are going to start to recognize it. Uh, let's go to our, uh, I mean, uh, just to reiterate your point, please. I think the point you're making is for the New York Times to come out and admit that this is going on is a big deal.